Kia ora Year 12. This video is a request from Jolyon for question 10b in one of the A-level papers that we've looked at that we can do so far. So this is a locus problem, so complex numbers problem, and it's a really nice question. If you draw a good graph, this question is really doable. If you draw a bad graph, you're likely to go a bit wrong. I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to do it with straight off a good graph, but I'm also going to do it algebraically, um, and I'm going to do, them, do it reasonably slowly. Just one more thing. Um, I want to look at the question first um, and see what we've got to do. And then I want to have a talk about what we mean by argz. So in this question, we have to first find the locus. We have to shade the region whose points represent complex numbers that satisfy these two inequalities here. And the first one is should be obvious that that's a perpendicular bisector pattern type. And the second one is a circle type. So we're going to have some kind of line and some kind of circle. And then we're going to have some of it shaded or something outside of it shaded. So we don't know yet. But that's what we should be looking for. Just one more thing. Um, when you read the examiner's report, um, again, it's about doing a good graph. When we sketch our argon diagram, we need to make sure that our scale is good and that our scale is the same on both axes. Otherwise, your circle is not going to look like a circle, and that's going to make life much harder. The second thing we've got to do here is so we're going to find something. Maybe it's going to look like this, right? This might be my locus. We have to find the least value of argz for points in this region. So what does it mean to find a value of argz? Well, going all the way back to basics, if that's my complex number z here, then the argument of z is the angle formed by the positive direction of the x-axis and the line from the origin going out to that number. Okay, so that's what we're going to be working with. And this is the trickier bit of the problem, the second part, as usual. Okay, so the first thing to look at are the two loci separately. So let's do um, this one here, which is the perpendicular bisector. First, I'm going to do this just using um, the graph. Okay, so looking here, we've got z, the distance between z and 2i is less than or equal to the distance between z and something. So we're going to rewrite this into this form here, z minus 1 plus i. Now we can interpret this as saying this side is the distance between a point and 0 plus 2i. And this side is the distance between a point and 1 plus i. So we've got our perpendicular bisector pattern coming here. Let's go to our very bad graph. I'm going to show you how bad it is when you draw a bad graph that it makes it really hard to see. So let's just put on, without a ruler, these markings. And we should say what they are. So we've got 1, 2, 3, i, 2i, 3i. First thing we can plot is the point 2i, which is here. And the second thing we can plot is the point 1i here. And we want the set of all points that are closer to this one, to 2i, than to 1 plus i. So let's now join up those two, and I'll use a ruler to do this. So let's join that line segment, and we're looking for the halfway point, or the midpoint here. All right, so we've got a perpendicular bisector pattern coming. We're looking for the midpoint of these two. So 0 plus 1 over 2, 2 plus 1 over 2. So we know our locus is going to involve that midpoint. And we can see from looking that the slope of this line here is, so it's, it's a diagonal line. So the perpendicular bisector is going to have a 45 degree slope. So if we throw this on here, that's going to be my locus there, or something to do with that, right? But this is feeling pretty vague, so that's why I'm going to go back and do the algebraic approach as well. So looking at this here, what I've done, again, is that I've spotted that we can draw this as a perpendicular bisector. We've got the midpoint here. 
And then we've got the slope of this line segment. So if we label that AB, we've got the slope of AB is equal to the vertical change over the horizontal change. I realize I'm doing this way slower than most of you need me to, but that's okay. So that's negative 1 over, over 1. And so the slope of the perpendicular bisector is going to be positive 1. And we know it's got to go through this point here. So we can get the line for that as y is equal to x plus 1. All right, that was pretty painful. And you can see that I've got a really, really bad graph here. I'm going to add to that bad graph by doing a bad graph for my circle now. Okay, so we've got the perpendicular bisector part of the locus. We'll worry about the inequality later. Next, we're going to work with this one here. So z minus 2 minus i has to be less than or equal to 2. Rewriting this, we get z minus 2 plus i is less than or equal to 2. So this is the locus of a circle with a center at 2 plus i and a radius of 2. So let's now draw that on. And just take off some of the mucky part on here. So let's take off that, take off that, and take off that. And we'll take off this equation. Right. So the center of the circle is at 2 plus i, which is here, and the radius is 2. So the radius goes out 2 here, out 2 here. We put, better put a line on here. And then over here, we're going to take it out to here. We're going to draw this. Right, so you can see that you really want to be taking a compass in with you to the exam so that your circle looks better than my really bad circle. And we're going to extend that perpendicular bisector out. So there it is there. Now, you can see from looking that we're probably going to be interested in this intersection point and this intersection point for the second part. But we haven't quite finished the first part yet. Right, so... This point here, up the top, we'll label B, and this one here we'll label A. Let's just go back and see what region we have to shade in. Well, we want the points that fit both of these loci, right? So we want to have, first of all, the inside of the circle shaded for this one here, because we want the distance from Z to 2 plus i to be less than or equal to 2. And then we also want the points that are closer to 2i than to 1 plus i. So that means that the points we're after are these ones in here, right? Because the perpendicular bisector is the set of points that are equidistant from those two. We want the points that are inside the circle, but closer to 2i than 1 plus i. So that's my locus. So I'm going to draw that as well as I can, but I'm doing that with a really deliberately badly drawn circle. Now we're going to look at the last part. We want to calculate the least value of argz for points in this region. So I do this by taking physically taking a ruler and seeing what I'm looking for. So here's my ruler. I'm looking for the point in that locus that's going to give me the lowest argument. So let's start here, and you can see that when I'm at this point here, so point A, I need a different color pen, so when I'm here, oh, not working, at this point here, the argument is the biggest, right? The argument there is going to be pi on 2. Let's put the ruler back on, and now moving that ruler around, we can see that the lowest possible argument is going to be this one here at point B. Okay, so the point that I'm after is the coordinates there, 
and then I need to find the argument of that point B. Now we've drawn it well enough that we can see that point B is at the top of the circle, right? And that's satisfying, it's on the perpendicular bisector line and it's up here. So point B has coordinates of 2 plus 3i. And from there, it's pretty easy to find the, the argument. So it will have the least arg z of the points in the locus. Please um, don't stop watching. I'm going to show you how to do this algebraically as well. Don't know if anyone's out there watching, but maybe you are. So arg z is equal to tan inverse of 3 over 2, right? It's that simple because I'm in the first quadrant, and that gives me my answer of 56.3 degrees. Now what I want to do now is to show you how much better it is if we've got a nice graph. So I've done some GeoGebra pictures. So here's the first one. That's the bad one, right? Here we go. Okay, so there's my circle drawn nicely. Now you can draw it that nicely if you take in a ruler and a compass to the exam, right? And the thing that makes becomes very clear on this is that the coordinates of this point at the top here are a nice 2 plus 3i. So that's with the circle on it, okay? And now these are my two points for doing the perpendicular bisector. So you can mark those on, and then we can take the ruler again. We can join them up, right? We can join them up really neatly instead of just a big messy one. So that lets me join those. We know the midpoint here. And we can see very easily, because we've got a good scale, that the perpendicular bisector is going to have um, a 45 degree angle. So it's just much, much more obvious when you've got a good diagram that what we're looking for is this area in here. And you can be much more confident that you're getting the correct answers. Now what I'm going to show you is um, how we can use algebra to get both of those loci. Um, for the circle one, I'm not going to go through all the algebra because we've done that lots of times. But let's just do the perpendicular bisector one. So we've got z minus um, 2i is greater than or equal to z minus 1 minus i. Let's start by saying let z equal x plus i y. Substituting this in gives me um, x plus i y minus 2i. Right, so that's my z there. Equals x plus i y minus 1 minus i. I'm going to group them now into real and complex parts. So I get x plus i into y minus 2 is equal to x minus 1 plus i into y minus 1. Right, applying the definition of um, distance, we could do that, or we could go straight to squaring both sides, right? So it's better just to go straight to this. x squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared. And this is going to generate the perpendicular bisector equation for us. We're going to have these quadratics, but they're going to nicely um, have things cancelling out on both sides. And we'll get a pretty simple linear equation. So we've got this. The x squareds cancel, so do the y squareds, and we're left with negative 4y plus 4 is equal to negative 2x minus 2y plus 2. Working that through gives me, I'll put all the steps in. So we've got negative 2y equals negative 2x minus 2. And then um, dividing through by negative 2 gives us y is equal to x plus 1, which happily matches exactly what we had earlier on the page, right? You can see that that's the line that we've been working with all along. And then the equation circle is this, is x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 4. So we can find the intersection by substituting this into here. And if we do that and work that through, um, we'll get our solutions.